Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker, and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is the book, Metabolical, and how finance literally changes our biochemistry to make us sick. Now, Metabolical is the most recent book from Dr. Robert Lustig. Now, I have made previous A Healthcare Z videos about Dr. Robert Lustig's work. He is a retired neuroendocrinologist, pediatric neuroendocrinologist from the University of California at San Francisco. And the most important thing about this book is the fact that Dr. Lustig wrote it after he retired, okay? So I, I talked to this um, investigative journalist once and he said that he loved talking to recently retired people because they knew so much about their industry, but they no longer were tied to a lot of the career risk and financial risk that goes along with having a job because they were retired. They're like, well, I'm kind of my own person and I can say what I really think. And so that's exactly what Dr. Robert Lustig does in this book, Metabolical. So just know that anytime anybody in any, in any industry writes a book and they are recently retired, then like, we should totally read that, okay? Because there's probably a lot of truth in there because I, I won't get into it today, but there's a lot of people in the insurance world, in the hospital world, in the physician world, you, in pharmaceutical world, you name it. There's a lot of people who keep quiet. And so if we're gonna improve healthcare and improve health for patients, then it's gonna take a lot of like recently retired people like Dr. Dr. Lustig to no longer be quiet anymore, okay? So that's super important. Okay, so he's on a mission to fix food. Now I'm gonna summarize metabolical with this flow chart right here. He basically makes the point in his book that, that finance, that the profit motive, that the money has driven the food and agricultural and food processing industry in America to create tons of added sugar in our food supply. And that food supply then leads to then us eating more sugar. And that sugar then results in high levels of insulin. And the high levels of insulin in our body are really the culprit of so much disease. So it's not literally the sugar, it's the insulin. And you know, I'm gonna do very brief biochemistry lesson here. Okay, so insulin is a hormone, okay? And what's a hormone? Hormones are what are called transcription factors. So whether it's testosterone or estrogen or, or insulin, all hormones, what a transcription factor does is it goes into the cell and it goes into the nucleus and it literally turns on and off DNA, it turns on and off genes. So you can think of the DNA like the software and the transcription factor like insulin says, okay, well, what software are you gonna run? Are you gonna run Windows? Are you gonna run Excel? Are you gonna run PowerPoint? It's all the transcription factors that determine which software gets run at what time. So transcription factors are hugely powerful. And insulin does a ton more than just quote unquote lower blood sugar. And we're gonna talk about all the diseases that high levels of insulin cause. So just know that hyperinsulinemia, high levels of insulin is super bad. And there's different things that this book covers to try to address high levels of insulin. Okay, working backwards. Listen, there's medications that we take to try to lower levels of insulin, right? So like metformin is not only taken by people with diabetes, but also women with polycystic ovarian disease, um, uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, it's sometimes called PCOS. Okay, that's a disease of hyperinsulinemia. So they take metformin to try to decrease insulin levels. Okay, next, we can just like eat less. We can eat less food. We can eat less sugar specifically. Okay, that's how these GLP-1 medications like Ozempic work. Like Ozempic isn't some sort of like magic. It just helps you eat less. Like if you take Ozempic and eat the exact same amount in the exact same way you did before, like, it's not, it's not gonna help you, okay? But also, other, there's lots of other ways to decrease your sugar intake as well, right? So there's intermittent fasting, there's the keto diet. There's just decreased access to sugary foods, specifically sugary sweetened beverages. So specifically, Dr. Lustig talks about um, a study that they did at UCSF because they used to serve tons of sugar sweetened beverages at the pediatrics, 
cafeteria. They're like, holy moly, we're treating kids for all of these metabolic diseases caused by sugar-sweetened beverages like soda and Gatorade, and now we're serving it in the cafeteria. Maybe we should stop doing that. So they stopped doing it, and they studied it, and they found that it, now, of course, you could bring it from home. They didn't ban it from the hospital. They just didn't sell it in the cafeteria anymore. And what did they find? Consumption of sugar-sweetened beverages actually went down, and consumption of water went up. So to a certain extent, like, you know, people are going to be like, ah, oh, you can't play food police. By the, listen, restricting access absolutely changes behavior when it comes to sugar consumption. Just like uh, restricting access decreases um, smoke, restricting access to cigarettes reduces smoking, okay? So just know that potentially for employers, like you might want to restrict access to, and you might want to look at your cafeteria or your vending machines. Um, I know a, a specifically an employer in Jacksonville, Florida, I mentioned them before, they, they started making lunch for all, they were, they were an air conditioning and heating company and they provided healthy lunches to all their employees because all their employees were going to 7-Eleven and getting junk food every day for lunch. They're like, we can't have this. So they made them healthy lunches. They had a kitchen at their office and they made healthy lunches for free for all their employees, okay? So you can decrease your insulin by taking a drug like metformin or you can actually change the amount of sugar that you're eating. Okay, so, or you can do what Robert Lustig is trying to do. He's trying to fix food. He's trying to affect the interchange between the government and the food companies and they're adding sugar to our food supply. That's why I put an asterisk there. That's what Dr. Lustig's working on. And why did they add sugar? Because it increases the palatability of food. Obviously, it makes it taste better. But also, sugar is an addictive substance. It, do it stimulates dopamine in our brain, and it makes us want to eat more. And as a result, Dr. Lustig talks about how the profitability of the food industry is actually much higher than it was in the 1960s. So all this sugar and all this high fructose corn syrup got started adding to food in the 1970s. And he looked at the profitability of food companies in the 1960s versus the profitability of the food companies after they started adding all these sugars in the 1970s. And guess what? It totally worked. When you add a substance that increases palatability and is addictive, it totally boosts your sales and it boosts your profits. And then they, the food companies did more lobbying and campaign contributions, so the politicians won as well. So they all won and we all lost, okay? So now, what I wanna point out here it's so fine. It's like, you're like, okay, diet, I get it. I hear about this ad nauseum, et cetera. But this isn't just about obesity and diabetes, which is typically what's associated with sugar and high levels of insulin. Really what this book does an excellent job of explaining is, now it's a little scientific, but it really explains how high levels of insulin just on their own are so detrimental to our health in so many ways. Specifically, high levels of insulin alone, like you're not, you, you know, you can be not obese, you can have like not have diabetes, and you can still have super high levels of insulin, and it will increase inflammation throughout your body. It increases your risk of cancer, independent of anything else. Just high insulin on its own increases your risk for cancer. Breast cancer, colon cancer, pancreatic cancer, kidney cancer, I could go on. It doubles your, the, it doubles the mortality rate from cancer, just high levels of insulin on their own. It increases, get this, it increases the risk of cardiovascular disease independent of high cholesterol and diabetes and all these other risk factors, okay? This was, this independent risk factor of high levels of insulin as its own risk factor for cardiovascular disease, was published in a study in the New England Journal of Medicine, like one of the most prominent journals in the world, in 1996. We've known about this for almost 30 years. Do you hear about this in the news? Do you hear about this from the heart community? Hyperinsulinemia itself is a risk factor, and we've known it for 30 years. So. The book Metabolical by Dr. Robert Lustig is fantastic. I have no connection to him or this book, but I wanted to share this summary with you today, and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.